Hey guys, it's Angelo, and with Battle for Azeroth's Alpha finally live, and more information and more gameplay being released every day, today we're having a more detailed look at Surrender to Madness in Battle for Azeroth. Surrender to Madness has been the most iconic Shadow Priest ability since Devouring Plague or even Shadow Form itself, and has been subject to many changes throughout its relatively short lifetime. From initially buffing the Shadow Priest's insanity generation by 300%, Surrender to Madness has been drastically nerfed and, to an extent, rightfully so. In Battle for Azeroth, Surrender to Madness may be facing serious changes once more, and in today's video we'll discuss what could be the future of our most notorious spell. We'll be breaking down the spell's current state, its alpha or rather its state on the alpha, and what could and should happen to make Surrender to Madness maintain its glory while not breaking the game again. Now, as always, sit back, relax, and let's go ahead and have a look. First off, for all newcomers or non-Shadow Priests out there, what is Surrender to Madness? Surrender to Madness is one of our level 100 talents and, currently, increases the insanity generation of all insanity generating abilities by 100% and you will also be able to cast while moving without any direct drawback. These benefits will last until the next time you exit Voidform, after which you die and are unable to be combat rezzed or otherwise brought back to life during the combat until the Surrender to Madness debuff expires, which is after 3 minutes of its initial activation. Surrender to Madness tries to highlight the playstyle of the Shadow Priest to the ultimate extent. Mastering your Void Form gameplay in this case directly means mastering Surrender to Madness, and the rewards of mastering both is the ultimate damage peak and a feeling of success unlike most others in World of Warcraft. The spell obviously comes with high risk. To be exact, the highest risk of anything in World of Warcraft's PvE environment, which is dying during an encounter. Previously, the rewards have greatly outweighed the risk, which becomes clear when we look at how well STM performed in early Legion content. Back then, Surrender to Madness was definitely too strong, but I'm sure most Shadow Priests will agree that this was the time when the talent hit the nail on the head in terms of gameplay design. The talent didn't just feel powerful and rewarding, it also had just enough of a risk factor feeling when used, required decent timing, spec knowledge, and encounter prediction, and was overall in a perfect position when not taking its damage output into account. However, since it did do ridiculous amounts of damage, it was nerfed from 300% to 200% and from there on to 100% extra insanity generation. Even though other aspects of the Shadow Priest were buffed in order to compensate for the nerfs to STM, we did notice a clear drop and shift in performance throughout the Tomb of Sargeras and Antorus of the Burning Throne. Surrender to Madness is currently only a shadow of its former self, unfortunately, a talent with nothing but the best intended with it, but incredibly hard to balance and keep under control, resulting in a playstyle we don't see anymore at all. In Battle for Azeroth, Surrender to Madness is currently facing interesting changes on the alpha. Surrender to Madness still increases the insanity generation of all insanity generating abilities by 100% and we can still cast while moving, however this now only lasts for exactly one minute and after this we don't actually die. We take 90% of our maximum health as damage and can generate any insanity for the next 30 seconds. The spell is now on a 4 minute cooldown, which is a change from the currently 10 minutes it is on. Now the question we want answered in this video is whether or not the change is a good one or a bad one. And I hate to break it to you, but these changes are actually more complex than we may think. Surrender to Madness thrived off of the fact that, in its essence, it is able to take the Shadow Priest's playstyle and actually add a whole new layer to it. For the first time in a very long time, at least in my opinion, this added new levels to the idea of playing a spec within a spec, all through the use of certain talent combinations. With the changes in Battle for Azeroth, Surrender to Madness seems to be more of a powered execute or rather empowered execute instead of anything else really. 
With a duration of only 1 minute and a 4 minute cooldown, Surrender to Madness still needs to be timed well, but can essentially only be used to either have a large opening damage window at the beginning of any encounter, or to go ham one last time towards the end of the fight. If Surrender to Madness only lasts 1 minute, this means that with the Shadow Priest's current Void 4 mechanics, the spell can only benefit from 59, or if you want to be very specific, 60 Void Form stacks really, and for the player to maximize its effect, will have to be used either at around 40 or 50 stacks while in Void Form, or possibly even later. Now, of course, it is still very early on in the BFA Alpha, but even with the current support mechanisms, like our artifact ability, our tier bonuses and anything else, like a lot of haste for example, it's not really feasible getting to 40 or 50 stacks and then using Surrender to Madness. At that point, we can't really keep our insanity at 100%, which means that by the time we enter Surrender to Madness while in Void Form, we will have a difficult time keeping it up for the entire duration. Do you see where I'm coming from? I won't go into detail much further here because again it is still very early on and this is supposed to be somewhat of a theoretical video as none of these changes are final yet. Personally I think that Surrender to Madness should stay the way it currently is, but actually get buffed in form of insanity generation while setting up other mechanisms to prevent the talent from getting out of hand. An example of this would be to increase the insanity generation to perhaps 250% but reducing our damage output during the time that the spell or rather the talent is active by 5-10%. to This can allow the talent to remain a fun and interesting choice while not making it too strong as other talents in its row can be just as strong or perhaps even a bit stronger. I understand that Surrender to Madness shouldn't be the only talent we use in its row, but it also shouldn't be the talent that we hardly ever use, like it currently is the case. The design idea behind Surrender to Madness was incredible in my opinion, and even though the talent is incredibly difficult to balance, it shouldn't just be nerfed so hard that its playstyle will literally just be unplayable. Now, can I see the battle for Azeroth changes, at least as they currently are, work? Or rather, good? Well, no. With Surrender to Madness being in the same talent row as Void Torrent, it's literally impossible to reach 100 stacks, even 90 stacks of Void Form, with it. And with Reaper of Souls seemingly going to be removed, there's just no way that Surrender to Madness can be effective. For those who've been watching my videos for a longer time, you will probably know how much I love Surrender to Madness. Now, I've made multiple videos solely about the talent and its playstyle, and no spell has ever been more interesting, engaging, or even game-changing in my personal opinion. Personally, I think that Surrender to Madness should definitely be revisited, along with the talent choices in its level 100 tier. If this is what Blizzard has planned for Surrender to Madness, then I am a bit worried when looking ahead. But let me know what you guys think. Do you think the STM changes will be good? Do you have hope that the developers will look back into the possible upcoming problems and will try to figure out solutions? Let me know what you have to say about it, as I'd be interested to hear. I hope you enjoyed this discussion type of video. I personally actually really like doing them sometimes, and if you like them, I'll be sure to make them more frequent in the future. Now, of course, thank you so much for everyone for watching. A special thanks to the supporters over at Patreon, who help out a lot as well. If you enjoyed this video, a like would go a long way, and if you want to see more of my content in the future, of course, feel free to subscribe. Now, as always, have a good one, my friends, and I will see you all in the next one.